Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Kauzer Wise, and this is the continuation video of sequencing model. Already, we have seen four different models under sequencing. In this series, we are going to see the fifth model that is processing n jobs through single machine that is one machine. In that, we have four different models. Number one, shortest processing time rule. Number two, weighted shortest processing time rule. Number three, earliest due date rule. And the last one, slack time remaining rule. Okay, so you can find the playlist link in the description box. Now, in this video, we are going to see the last one that is slack time remaining rule. Now, let's see the problem. See the problem. STR that is slack time remaining rule. Okay, the information regarding jobs to be scheduled through one machine is given below. Here we have seven jobs and processing time in days they have given and due date in days also given for seven different jobs. With this, they are asking us to find out five things. Number one, what is the first come first served schedule? Second one, what is the shortest processing time schedule? Third one, what is the slack time remaining schedule? And then fourth one, what is the earliest due date schedule? And the last one, what are the mean flow times for each of the schedules above? Okay, so we are going to see the calculation one by one. Okay, the first one is, what is the first come first served schedule? So here we have seven jobs now. This is the first job. This one is second. Like that, they have given seven different jobs. According to the first method, we have to assign first come and first serve schedule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the first come and first serve schedule. Let's see the calculation. See the solution. Okay. According to the first come, first serve schedule, this is the way to find out the total duration. See, here we have seven jobs. No. According to the first come, first serve schedule, we have to consider the order as it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And here for in time, out time, just take the processing time. For the first job, processing time is 5 days. So, in time is 0, out time is 5. For the second job, in time, after completion of the first job, the machine will take up the second job. No. So, in time is day 5 and processing time is uh, 10 days. So, 5 plus 10, 15. Like that, you can find out the in time and out time for 7 jobs. Okay. Now, let's see the second calculation. See the problem. The second one is, what is the shortest processing time schedule? Okay. According to this rule, we have to consider the processing time. They have given processing time for each and every job. No. So, we have to select and process based on the shortest, that is the least duration. So, here which is the least duration? 4. So, you can assign job 4 first. The next least duration is 5. So, job 1 will be the second. The next duration is 8. Here we have two different jobs, same duration. But we have to follow the order. So, first 3 and then 7. Okay. And the next least value is 10 days. So, this will be the next. And the next one is 15 is the least. The next job will be 5 and last one 20. 6 will be the last job. So, this is the way to find out the schedule, processing schedule according to SPT rule. Okay. See the solution. The second one is shortest processing time schedule. So, according to this rule, this is the optimal sequence. Okay. 4, 1, 3, 7, 2, 5, 6. Okay. Now, we have to find out the in time and out time for each and every job. For that, just consider the processing time. For the first job, in time is 0. What is the processing time for job 4? Four? 4 days. No. 0 plus 4, 4. For the next job, in time is 4. What is the processing duration for job 1? 5 days. So, 4 plus 5, 9 days. Okay. The next one, for job 3, 8 days. So, 9 plus 8, 17. Like that, you can calculate in time and out time for all the jobs according to this optimal sequence, according to SPT rule schedule. Okay, see the problem. The third one is, what is the slack time remaining schedule? Okay, so according to this schedule, first we need to find out the slack time. 
there is a formula to find out this lag time that is uh, the difference between due date and processing time is equal to slack time just find out the slack time for each and every job separately after finding the slack time then you can find out the optimal schedule based on the least value okay see the calculation see the solution the third one is a slack time remaining schedule for that first we need to find out the slack time okay they have given seven jobs and due dates also given processing time also given okay just compare due date and processing time the difference between these two is called slack time so i have calculated slack time for each and every job separately so after finding the slack time now we have to find out the optimal sequence based on the slack time remaining okay so which is the least one two is the least one so this will be the first okay so after processing job two the next will be the least one is seven no so this will be the second process that is job three and then the least one is ten three and then the least one 15 no so this will be the fourth one and then 5 and then 21 6 and finally 37 is the last one 7 okay so this is the optimal sequence that is job 2 first and then job 3 and then job 1 and then job 5 and then job 6 and then job 4 and finally job 7 so this is the optimal sequence according to slack time remaining schedule okay according to slack time remaining schedule we have got the optimal sequence two three one five six four seven okay then we have to find out the completion time of each and every job separately for the first one starting time in time is zero and what is the processing time for job two see the problem 10 days okay zero plus 10 10 days this is the completion time okay and then for the next job in time will be 10 and what is the processing time for job 3 8 days so 10 plus 8 18 okay the next one for job 1 in time is 18 and what is the processing time for job 1 5 days so 18 plus 5 23 like that you can find out the completion time for each and every job okay now see the problem the next one is uh, what is the earliest due date schedule okay so according to this rule we have to consider due dates okay just see the due dates for all the jobs and which is the earliest one that is least one 12 days okay so job 2 will be the first schedule and the next list is 15 but here two different jobs same duration or due date so we have to follow the order first one and then job 3 okay the next list is 25 days so job 4 will be the next one and then 30 job 5 and then 40 job 6 and finally 45 this job will be the last one okay so this is the optimal sequence according to earliest due date schedule okay see the solution according to earliest due date schedule this is the optimal sequence and we have to find out the completion time for each and every job for the first job in time 0 what is the processing time for job 2 10 days so 0 plus 10 10 days for the next one in time 10 and what is the processing duration for job 1 5 days no 10 plus 5 15 okay in this way you can find out the completion time for each and every job according to the optimal sequence based on earliest due date schedule okay see the problem the last one is what are the mean flow times for each of the schedules above okay we have calculated completion time according to four different schedules okay now we are going to find out the mean flow time mean flow time means average completion time for all the four different schedules see the solution see the previous calculation in order to find out the mean flow time just get the total completion time of each and every job and divided by number of jobs how many jobs seven jobs no then you will be getting mean flow time and this is the completion time according to first come first serve schedule in the same way second method that is spt schedule this is the completion time just get the total divided by seven in the same way for the third one slack time remaining schedule this is the completion time no that is out time get the total of this and divided by 
7. In the same way, fourth one, EDD schedule. This is the completion time. No, get the total divided by 7. Okay, in this way, you can find out the mean flow time for the four different methods. For the first one, 34.86 days. For the second one, 30 days. For the third one, 39.86 days. For the last one, 35.57 days. Okay. So, this is the way to solve this kind of problem. For other models, you can find the playlist link in the description box. Hope you like this video. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.